Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. This is Madden 18 on EA Sports. In today's game, we've got a pair of safeties who will be flying all over the field trying to make plays. It's the Ravens going up against the Jaguars. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Larry, the fans in teal and black are ready to lock down the bank as you get a look inside Everbank Field in Jacksonville, Florida. This crowd excited to see their Jaguars as both teams emerge from their tunnels a moment ago. We are just about ready for football as the Jags get set to match up with Joe Flacco and the Baltimore Ravens. And a welcome in, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden, and Charles, so much gets made about offensive comparisons. Here's a matchup where the defenses may just take center stage. Yeah, we're usually talking about guys scoring touchdowns. How about the guys who prevent them and change the momentum of the game when they take the ball away? I love those ball hawks in the secondary. People after my own heart. The children will grow, and it's the final weekend of summer, but we've got the NFL, and we're underway on EA Sports. That'll be taken in the end zone. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. So here come the Ravens with their first look on offense. They'll be led out by their quarterback in his 10th year now from Delaware. It's Joe Flacco. And what a career it's been for Joe Flacco. Began his college career at Pitt before transferring to Delaware. And boy, he carried it over into the NFL. 4,300 yards passing in 2016, a career high. and 10 and Flacco looking to throw and no incomplete boy they took a shot there on the first play try to start it out with a bang but it's second down and we get a quick peek at the Ravens starting offense this organization's identity for years has been its defense but if you take a closer look at the offense in 2016 better than you might think 17th overall 12th in passing they're looking to take the next step now to becoming a top 10 offense in the nfl and on second and 10 now now a carry here for terrence west and he'll get this one up to the 26. he only got a couple on that one so not a ton of help they'll have a third and eight forthcoming and time to take a look at the Jaguar defense. Former Dallas Cowboys safety Barry Church signed with the Jacksonville Jaguars in free agency in 2017, and he's going to provide a steadying influence as well as an ability to make big plays from his safety position. One thing I always noticed about him from the time he was in college throughout his NFL career, he's a ball hawk, always around the football, ready to make a play. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. Fake to Allen. Here's Flacco. He's going to air one out. Incomplete. He had his hands on it, but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. And that's a great opening series defensively. You force what should be a three and out on your opening possession. And great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. Back deep for the Jaguars, Marquise Lee. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. They'll be let out by their quarterback from Central Florida. It's Blake Bortles. 
And partner, this is a young man who's got it all. Big, strong arm, strong-legged runner when he decides to take off with the football, but it hasn't all come together for him because he's thrown way too many interceptions in his career. Has to take care of the ball better because when he does that, he can be one of the better starting quarterbacks in the league. Yeah, to your point, in three years, 51 interceptions. He's also fumbled 29 times. Now the rookie first rounder from LSU, it's Leonard Fournette. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. A gain of three, second down. And the offensive unit now for the Jaguars. The Jacksonville Jaguars offense in 2016 truly expected to pick up where they left off in 2015, where they were a big play offense by the end of the season, whether it was running the ball or throwing it but they had some inconsistency in the offensive line and weren't able to reach those numbers. They're hoping for a repeat of 2015 with their 2017 squad. Here we go. Three, 39. Ah. Now Bortles throwing on second down. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. The veteran tight end, Mercedes Lewis, the intended receiver, and it's third down. The starters now defensively for Baltimore. When talking about the Ravens' defense, it's pretty easy to take them for granted, isn't it? The traditionally a top-10 defense, but if you take a closer look at the numbers in 2016, that might surprise you about how good they were during the season. Fifth against the run, ninth against the pass, seventh overall. Once again, the Baltimore Ravens, one of the better defenses in the NFL. Now the Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third down. Could be a blitzer. Bortles going to throw. He lost a big chunk, six yards there, and it leads to fourth down. Brad Nortman in his sixth year in the league on to punt it away. Back deep for the Ravens, Michael Campanero. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. A big boot that time, 57 yards the official distance. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guys a little bit I don't, jumpy. But you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three now and they out. have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. <laughs> They start on the ground with West. A beautiful fake. And he takes this one just shy of midfield all the way to the 49. A big run there. 29 yards and a first. And that's something that's been lacking in Baltimore's running game the last few seasons. The ability to really hit on a big run. Last year, their longest run was just 41 yards all season. Four yards per carry near the bottom of the league. So it'll be first down here after the run. Flacco looks to throw. And he's got the veteran here. It's Mike Wallace. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A really nice gain of 25 yards. 
quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision and receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. to throw on first and 10 with Flacco. His throw incomplete. He was trying to get it to Brett Perriman there, and that'll bring up second down. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Encroachment, defense. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. Take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. Play action. Flacco. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Avery Jones in there to get him for a loss of nine, and that'll lead to fourth down. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sort of back gets hit. <laughs> So on fourth down, Flacco off to the sidelines. He gives way to Justin Tucker. From the right hash, this from 44 yards out. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked up. And now nothing but green ahead of him. He's at the 40. The 20. 10. 5. And they will score. It's a Jacksonville touchdown. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And this is up and good. The score now 7-0 Jaguars. After the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that work, but he 
stopped where he ultimately would have been and he simply taken a knee and that's the 25 yard line. offense now they get set to head back on the field throwing here on first down Flacco Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack pressure can come from all over when you're plotting a defensive strategy on that particular play it just came from the outside Second down now after the sack. Flacco off play action. And it's hauled in by Ben Watson. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. That one goes for 24 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. <laughs> Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. This is West. And no room to maneuver there. Give him a yard up to the 47. I once had a defensive player in the NFL tell me, if I beat and dominate the guy across from me, I'm helping my team. Well, winning one-on-one -on -one battles is always a part of the game. But when you have good team defense, as we just saw there, a one broken tackle, but he didn't get away because the rest of the guys arrived to put him on the ground. On the ground, it's West again. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. And that's complete, it's Watson. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. The Raven passing game getting in sync, another first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. This is Buck Allen. Flash the stick skills on that run, but then stop shy of the 35. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Five yards left for the offense. It's second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive. And normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, it looked like the offensive line let him down a little bit. They allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff him for a loss. 
The Ravens on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and eight. Flacco fakes the give. Sets to throw. He's going to look deep for Perriman. And Perriman's got it for a Raven touchdown. Rashad Perriman, 38 yards. And the Ravens are an extra point away from tying the football game. And he showcased his blazing speed on that one. Was he wearing football cleats or track spikes? <laughs> because he was gone. Big time play. And just think about what that does if you're a receiver on the team with him. Well, that's got to open things up for you as well because if I'm a defense, I've got to get back deeper and deeper in order to keep him in front. But I'm not sure how many can actually keep him in front with that speed. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays, and it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set here. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves job that way. You get a second opportunity, nothing big happened, but then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. Now a play fake here on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. I feel for some of these guys nowadays because it is so tough to be able to run with these tight ends. Their speed, their elusiveness, especially when they run across the field. Because you're not just running with him. You're trying to run through some traffic as well. Now the offense lining up first and ten. They go play action here on first down. Looking and finding Allen Hearns. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. And a nice gain of 21 yards. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they showed to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. And a movement there coming from the middle of the line. And you understand he wants to get off the ball quickly, but the ball's right in front of him. He has to watch it move first. The defense helps the offense out there. Now five yards to go on first down. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. Pass. Offense. Oh. 
So he was past the line of scrimmage when he threw it. And as they say, that's a no-no. Got to be able to understand where you are on the field and not cross the line before throwing the ball downfield. So second and ten here. After the penalty, it's Fournette. And he won't get much. Maybe a couple down inside the 35 to the 34. Nice job there defensively on third down. Not only did they string the play out, but they didn't allow any room for a cutback. Really well organized on the defensive side. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. They go play action for Yeldon. Now it's Bortles. And he finds a man. It's McCaffrey. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. So that one a hold right guard. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that could be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. Got caught for the penalty. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. To throw his Bortles. And an alley to run. And he's going to get this one down right to the edge of the red zone of the chalk of the 20. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. down and 10 now for the offensive group. Into the red zone. It's Bortles. That is caught at the 7. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Now Bortles. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Aurelius Ben from three yards out. And the Jaguars have taken the lead. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower. Bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball out of the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. That time, a six-play drive, and it culminates in a Jags touchdown. Myers now to kick it away. 
That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Two seconds to go, first quarter. They begin here with a run by West. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. One quarter down. 14-7 is the score. More from Jacksonville after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Second quarter now. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis with you. It's the Ravens who have the football, but they face a second and long to start things out. was the intended target, the tight end. And it'll bring up third down. The Ravens on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third down and 12. Here's Flacco. He's got his man. That's Wallace. And he'll be down deep into Jacksonville territory. A big play there on the catch and run. 59 yards. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this, but run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. get him inside the red zone here down to about the 19. One yard officially on the pickup and it'll leave him with a third and 11. The best defensive linemen they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands so they can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Passing play. Flacco. Pressure and Flacco's gonna be dropped. Yannick Ngakwe in there to drop him for a loss of 10. And it'll be fourth and long. I think Jacksonville was hoping, but still it was a bit of a surprise to see Yannick Ngakwe last year. Second in the NFL among rookies in sacks. We just saw another one there. Yeah, he had eight. Of course, last year, a lot of the press going to Jalen Ramsey, Miles Jack, but Ngakwe continuing to put his thumbprint on this franchise. So on fourth down, Flacco off to the sidelines. He gives way to Justin Tucker. 
He had his lone attempt blocked earlier. And that is no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So it's a second missed field goal here in this first half. He'll have to think about that going forward. Maybe time for a little soul searching as well. Yeah, the head coach might be looking towards the heavens because you wonder if this will affect the fourth down decision making going forward. If you get fourth and three, fourth and four, situations that used to be calls for the kicker might get a second thought. Getting set to go again, Blake Bortles marches back onto the field with his offense. And he had the touchdown on the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverages last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one. And it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? get closer and smother it just as they did on that last play. Portals to throw on second down. He'll set up the screen to Fournette. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Ten yards there, good enough for the Jags first down. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. down carry and some room to work and he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41 it's another 10 yards on that one and another first down and Leonard Fournette impressing there with that run it's hard to believe that no Jacksonville Jaguar has broken a thousand yards since Maurice Jones drew in 2011 and Leonard Fournette could be that guy even with the ankle injury last year at LSU still averaged six and a half yards per carry and absolutely intimidated opposing defenses a lot of guys simply didn't want to tackle him Bortles now on the option left side and holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped to the backfield They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert, but right now looking at a third and three. Here's Bohan on the fullback. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. Normally when you see a short gain in the middle of a 3-4 defense, go ahead and pat the nose tackle on the back because he's holding things up and taking on extra blockers, which allows one of the inside linebackers to roam free and make the tackle. Here's Brad Nortman now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away. And boy, it's another boomer. Joe Flacco and company heading back out onto the field. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but they're losing. And I think as the captain of the offense, you probably always feel like you need to do more in that situation. The best have always felt that way. And they won't settle for anything less 
So right now, his goal is to increase what he's doing on the field, try to make sure his teammates come along with him, and he feels like if I do better, everyone will do better. And that's what we're seeing from him right now. Got to have a little extra determination. Yeah, a little extra determination. He has thrown the touchdown pass. No interceptions for him personally to this point. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. West and able to get it across the 10 to the 15 that'll go for a gain of 13 helping big time to get away from that end zone first down partner I think a lot of people thought that Baltimore would draft at least one runner in fact they didn't take any skill position players in the draft so I think a lot still gonna fall on Terrence West well he did have over a thousand yards from scrimmage last year a career high Up play action. Flacco. And incomplete on a deep ball. Ben Watson was the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And a short gate across the 15 to the 17-yard line. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. The Ravens on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and eight. From the gun, Flacco. He hits his target, left side, Watson. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. And a nice gain of 21 yards. the 43 extra yards to the 43. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? They'll run again here with West. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. The Ravens on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and four. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Calais Campbell in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. Calais Campbell, all six feet, eight inches of him, signed away from Arizona in the offseason. He's going to be a mainstay, the defensive front for Jacksonville. Eight sacks last year, hoping to build off that. Those eight sacks were just one off his career high. Yeah, he's an excellent player, whole lot of man.
Here's Sam Cook now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set to go again. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. On first and ten, here's Bortles. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. A little antsy on the left side of the line. Yeah, I think they got the guy in the end. I think they got the DN there on that one. And let's face it, he is so amped up. Wanting to get a good get off on the snap, jump too quickly. to about the 37. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Again, it's Fournette. And some room to maneuver. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. The reason that counter or misdirection plays work so well is that usually you've given them a reason to think that everything's going to the direction that starts initially. You've run that type of a play throughout the game. You've given them that look. And now you're going to counter things and bring it back the other way. Almost a tendency breaker at times. And a lot of it is making sure that you have an illusion, almost like a magician. Look over here, but the play is actually happening over there. And that's where a running back's vision comes into play. See the hole in a place where people don't expect and get there with some speed. And that's exactly what he did on that play. A reminder coming up at halftime. Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando with our halftime report, but business to take care of before that. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. From midfield, here's Bortles. Over the middle, the connection to Hearns. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run. Big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Check 
Bortles now on first down. It's caught right side of turns. And he's brought down. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. zone now. They'll look to throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. throwing on second down over the middle complete it's Cole and he doesn't quite make it they do stop him but he gets it all the way down to the one So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. They'll try to punch it in with Fournette. And he'll take this one in for a Jags touchdown. A great effort there. Taking it in from a yard out. And the Jaguars add six to their lead. And there you go, nothing really too complex. Block, keep your assignments, let them run it in, they did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking, beats good tackling on that play, and result, touchdown. It's good, and it is now 21-7. So that drive in total eight plays. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. Myers now to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. Back onto the field now goes Buck Allen as he gets ready. You can count his carries on one finger. They've only given him the rock one time, Charles. What gives? So we can't draw any conclusions just yet. He has to touch the ball multiple times in order to get into a rhythm and have a chance to have success. You know who else gets into a rhythm? The offensive line. They feel better about what they're doing when they know they've had multiple opportunities to get it done. Yeah, well, the conclusion we can draw so far, they're losing here in the second quarter. Let's see if they change tunes. First and 10, and Flacco looking to throw. 
A look over the middle, and he's got Perriman. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. Holding offense. Well, there have been a ton of sacks. They were just trying to prevent another. So what you're telling me is the conventional way has not really worked for them, huh? Not at all. Not at all. So he tries to grab him here, and they still get caught. Flacco from the gun. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Watson. Only two yards on the completion at second down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's going to be taken down right at about the 15-yard line. Only two yards on the carry. That's going to set up a third and long, third and 15 to be exact. The Ravens on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This will be third and 15. Flacco gives to Allen. And this will go as a short gain on what will be the final act of this first half. So we hit the halftime break here in Jacksonville with the Jags on top. As we send you a couple hours south to Orlando, let's check in with Larry Ridley for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Jaguars are happy to be sitting in the locker room with a lead. The Ravens won't panic either. They know they just need to take it one play at a time. All right, let's do this. Here's the first half highlights. Down to late in the first. Portal's going to complete the pass, and he caps off the six-play drive with the score. Jaguars is up now by seven. Now waiting seconds of the half. They run with the big rookie and look at a motor, Leonard Fournette. And he capped off the seven-play drive with the score as they go out in front, 14 to 7. Okay, Larry, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in corner number three. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Jaguars now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. This is sort of what you would call the put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Here we go now. Green, 39. Green, 39. Throwing on first down is Bortles. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. Coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Blue 45. Blue 45. 
from the gun. It's Bortles. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. He was looking to get it to Allen Hearns that time. And now it's third down. Oh, boy, partner, did that just happen? I've got my hand over my eyes right now because, like, like him, it's going to haunt my dreams, too. He was wide open. How did he overthrow him there? Uh, defensively, just very lucky. You know that they got away with one there. Here we go. Blue for the On play action, now Bortles. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Cole. A good pick up there of 20 yards. So there on that play, offensively, they were in the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver is crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. Now he'll go deep down them. This is caught at the 20. And he's going to get this one down right to the edge of the red zone of the chalk of the 20. That one goes for 36 yards. Great patience in the pocket. Of course, it's easy to be patient when the protection's good, and it was. Yeah, you've got to pat those guys on the helmet and say thanks because they gave him plenty of time to stay back there, survey the field, go through the reads that he wanted to, and deliver the ball accurately. That was really well executed. So they're operating in the red zone. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. This will be caught just inside the 10. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. 10 more there and another first down. They go play action here on first down. And this will be incomplete. down now after the incompletion. Portals on the give to Fournette. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. A great play there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Jaguars add on to their lead. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit. Get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game, you know, the second half, no matter what, whether it's first five minutes, first three, whatever, this was a big score to start the second half. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays and a nine-yard run on the end of it.
Here's Myers now to kick it away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right yeah. away. Shocker. <laughs> try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. The drive begins with a handoff to West. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. I think they want to start getting back into this game, it behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They'll run it now, out of the gun. He takes this for three to the 29. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right, it's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. The Ravens on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This will be third and six. Flacco looks to throw. That's into the hands of Wallace over the middle. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. time 52 yards and it'll be Jaguar football as they take over deep in their own territory here comes Blake Bortles now to lead his offense back out there how do you break down his game so far just the one touchdown pass but sometimes the touchdown pass stat category that doesn't tell the whole story it really doesn't not until you balance it with the error side you know, and in this case, he hasn't thrown any interceptions. So a lot of people would call this almost a pedestrian game, kind of a bus driver game. But that's just really wrong. Being a bus driver is a good thing if you're running a football team because that means you're in control and you're taking your team to the right places. Yeah, he's been pretty solid. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. But one thing's for sure, they're still taking their shots downfield, even with a big lead. No, I think it's way too early to go into a shell, so I like what they're doing. Continue to take your shots, continue to be aggressive. It's not their job to slow themselves down. On second down, here's Fournette. And he'll lose yardage here, back to the 15. It'll be a loss of one, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. This was boxing. You think maybe they would have thought about stopping this one because this defense has been bruised, it's been battered, but this is why they keep the fight going, right? They just got done with a really nice play, showing they still got a little bit left, don't they? Haven't had many plays that they can clip, put in the film room and smile about, but hey, there's one. Clip and save. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and 11. They go play action for Yeldon. Now it's Bortles. And that is incomplete. 
Well, no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. Here's Brad Nordman now, standing just about on his own goal line. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. Now Campanero. Call that one an even 60 yards, 6-0. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked so well. Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Now a play fake here on first down fighting to stay upright able to get away looking for Perriman and it's intercepted picked off by the linebacker Paul Puzlesny and Brandon this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out okay where is he going with the football because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. Getting set to go again, Blake Bortles marches back onto the field with his offense. And right now, probably just one thing in his mind, it's getting back to the hot start because he's really faded. And ordinarily when that happens, he, the quarterback, as you know, is usually the leader of the squad. Now there's probably a, a silent camaraderie that comes around him saying, hey, guess what? We got you. Don't worry about it. Let's go, big fella, because they know more times than not, he tends to pick things up, and they tend to play well. Trying to get the run game going. This is Fournette. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. They keep it with Fournette on first down. And a short pick up there down to about the nine. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. You know how we get focused at end of the half and end of the game situations about how much time's on the board and, you know, what you need to do? Sometimes you don't even have to worry about that. That's just smart football. You know, that kind of a lead, staying in bounds, it burns clock even in a situation that we're not really focused on it. Fortis going to run the draw with Fournette. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. In their mind, certainly a field goal try would be a letdown. They had the great starting field position, now facing third down. Shotgun now for Bortles. And he's got it. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Allen Hearns, a 14-yard touchdown. And the Jags take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash this one in. 
I know a lot of people look at these games and think, all right, this thing's done. Let's have some sportsmanship. Let's not try and score. You should never do that in the NFL. I've seen big leads blown, and teams that looked like they had a victory, all of a sudden were going home with a loss. Now Myers for the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. A drive there of just four plays. And it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. Here's Myers now to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now here come the Ravens. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. <laughs> see what happens. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Miles Jack in there to record another sack. Their sixth of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. take this up only to about his 18-yard line. He'll get three, but it leaves him with a big hole here on third and very long. The Ravens on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and 17. To pass, Flacco. And that's complete. It's Watson. And they'll get it all the way out near midfield to the 45. A very solid gain of 27. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback who has to slide and find open space to throw. And to give this time to the tailback. A swift move and then tackled just on the other side of midfield. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Second down following the run. Flacco off play action. Now he'll let it go deep over the... This is caught inside the 15. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. 
They give him a gain of 38. We just saw him hit a big play there on a deep post. And most of the time, the post isn't available because you usually have defenders in the middle of the field. But if you throw enough curls and crossing routes and underneath routes, <laughs> I know from experience, they get tired of watching those balls get caught. They start to creep up a little bit, and that's when you can hit them big over the top. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Now a handoff here to his running back. And they're going to get him down, but not before a pretty good run right there. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. They come out here in the eye. Here's Allen. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, as the play call comes in on third down, you have to think about four-down territory here. Down a few touchdowns, they need points, and they need big points. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They'll run. This is Allen. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. They come out with one back and three tight ends. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And I think they stopped him again. They did at the one-yard line. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. Got to figure this is one they need here on third and goal. They come up in an offset eye. They'll try to pound it in with West. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. Now, this feels like old-school football because this has turned into a good old-fashioned goal line stand. So on offense, what do you do now? Do you decide to run it or throw it if you go for it on fourth down? So on fourth down, Flacco off to the sidelines. He gives way to Justin Tucker. And remember, he had one blocked earlier. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. Well, I guess we're at the stage here where they wouldn't say no to any points, but I don't think field goals are what they're looking for here in the second half. I don't either, Brandon. When you're down as much as they are, that's the sound of a head coach waving the white flag to me. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. They built up that lead at intermission, and they're just continuing to pour it on right now, aren't they? Locked into a really good groove right now. I don't know if it's just the play calling. I know the execution is really, really sharp right now. And all the playmakers are doing exactly what you expect. They're making plays. And right now, 
defense has no answer and no chance of catching up. Yeah, they're just looking to turn anywhere for a stop defensively. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. So they jumped on the left side of that line. And you know when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting blocks, waiting for the pistol to fire and go, and he jumped a little bit too early. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Play action. It's Bortles. Now he's hit, and Bortles fumbled. It's loose. So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity miss. It definitely was, because that's all defenses talk about. Getting the football and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That can be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right. A lost opportunity. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. with a fumble but they recover it and it brings up second down Fournette on the counter and he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there 12 yards is the pick up there and that's going to lead to a third down well partner I know this type of running back I mean this size this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Now a play fake. Bortles. Is going to be incomplete. Really good, smart play by the defense, understanding third and short, guarding the first down sticks, and being able to make a play on the football and bat it down. Here's Brad Nordman now. He's been terrific so far. So possession goes over here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Throwing here on first down. Flacco. Now a hit, and Flacco drops the football. It's loose. And they've got it just two yards away from the end zone. They'll have it first and goal here from the two-yard line. 
And with that kind of a deficit, you can't afford to make any kind of mistakes. But it's been pretty symptomatic what we've seen all game with them, isn't it? Down, say, down this big in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you'd quarter. say an afternoon to forget, absolutely. comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. They were forced to punt last time. And I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot. Great opportunity to run your full playbook. If they want to take a shot here. They can go ahead and do it. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. From the two-yard line now, it's first and goal. Now Leonard Fournette, and he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacksonville. A great effort there, taking it in from two yards out. And the Jags take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash this one in. The extra point now coming from Myers. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. A nice tidy little drive there, getting the ball in excellent field position and only one play to score it. Here's Myers now to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> Look to throw on first and ten with Flacco. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Watch 82. Watch 82. He likes to sneak out late. Watch 82. Man. Ready. Single, single. Ready. From the gun, Flacco. He hits his target. Left side, Watson. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. I see an extra defensive back on the field. little surprise here on third and one. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. On third and one, I think everyone in the stadium thought they'd try and run the football there, but they tried to surprise the defense and hit something through the air. Instead, it results in an incompletion. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. 
They'll run for it with West. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. It's a gain of five on the play. And they're able to pick up the conversion here on fourth down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. So here we go, first and ten now. Passing play, Flacco. Quick throw that's complete on the inside slam. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. Now that run is one to build on, and I know it sounds like a cliche and it seems like a simple thing, but truthfully, Coaches are always looking for something to pull out of a tough day. And right now, this team has had one of those. So that run there, I guarantee you, that's a clip and save as they move forward and look towards the next game. And he'll tell his team, this is what we're looking for. This is what we planned for. Let's have more of this to start games as opposed to getting it at the end. Now flags come in. I think one of the Ravens got going a little early. False start offense. That's going to set him back five yards. And here comes play number six on this drive. Now it's Flacco. And Watson has it right side. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. And he's been one of their few bright spots here this afternoon. And as you pointed out, so far he's gotten his. That's not been the issue at all. But the teammates, the other guys, they've been shut down. That's why the defensive guys have to feel pretty good, even though he's over 100 yards. Yeah, he topped 100 with that last catch. Second down, Flacco now. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. So apparently some grabbing of the jersey there on the O-line. Yeah, just look in the interior, and that's where the penalty occurred. Second down, Flacco to throw. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Malik Jackson with a great push up front. He picks up the sack and a loss of eight. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Flacco and the Ravens now after the sack need something good here on third and long. Now flags come in. I think one of the Ravens got going a little early. 
offense. And that'll set him back five. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Here's Flacco. And Matthews has it right side. A heck of a play there on third down, but amazingly, they're still short for fourth. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Now Justin Tucker. He has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. This will be from 56 yards out. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this score will stay right where it is. And it's hard to hold a kick from this distance against him, but that is now three misses for him in the game so far. Three! And you wonder where his head's at right now. Kickers are a funny breed, but I have a feeling he'd love to see a 29-yarder next time to get him back in the groove. Leonard Fournette making his way back out there. I guess it kind of goes without saying at this point, but he's had a great game, as we like to say, a nose for the end zone, no doubt. Continues to find it throughout this game, and I'm sure he's got a nice place to live. He might want to make an offer on the end zone for a second home <laughs> because that's what it's been like throughout this contest. He knows how to get there. And boy, he looks happy when he does. He's already bought all the property in the end zone. That's the problem. He's going to sell to himself now. Here we go. Three, 90. They begin with a run by Fournette. <laughs> a big hit. Knocked down sideways. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back at New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see. Yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. The Jaguars on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This will be third and six. Here we go. Blue 45. Blue 45. From midfield, here's Bortles. Oh, and Lewis lost the football. And it's picked up by the Ravens. And they will take over possession of the football at their 42-yard line. Well, maybe it hasn't exactly been a Rembrandt. But they've been mistake-free to this point and finally cough it up. I don't think it's going to cost them the game. They should be fine. But, boy, they're going to hate that going back and watching tape and being able to say we were that close to achieving our goal of zero turnovers yeah. during the game. A little blemish, but as you say, still comfortably in command. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Flacco. here as he's taken down. Yannick Ngakwe in there to get him for what will be a loss of 13 yards. 
the amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Second down. And Watson has it right side. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. And they get 16 out of that one, but they'll still need to convert on third. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. That's one you maybe expect your roaming free safety to come up with, but it's second down. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. Second down following the incompletion. Flacco will take to the air again. And his throw here is incomplete. Incomplete pass on second down. Let's see what the offense draws up here on third. Again, it's Flacco to throw. Able to shake him off. But now he's swallowed up and taken down. Yannick Ngakwe in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Now Justin Tucker, he has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. This will be spotted just shy of midfield, a 59-yard attempt. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through, and the drive will wind up yielding three. Well, in the grand scheme of things, it's likely not going to matter much, but at least they get themselves three points closer to respectability. And I don't know that they're going to feel a whole lot better about things because they've clearly been outplayed all game long. But, hey, no reason not to take the points when the opportunity presents itself. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And the 
the Jaguars are going to cover this one up. Uh, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. there maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40 and when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts they've got all three still defensively to me you have to start right now here's the time and that means you've got to stop them on defense not give up the yardage use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself but now is the time to start using those timeouts and keep in mind it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning they'll run it again with four net and little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. Only a yard on the pickup. And now they've got a third down and eight. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. The Jaguars on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and eight. From the gun, it's Bortles. Throw left side complete. It's Cole. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. So on fourth down, Doug Marone going to send out his field goal unit. Time for a break. This one, all over but the shouting. We'll finish it after this. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. So on fourth down, Doug Marone going to send out his field goal unit. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. shift to the defense of the Jaguars now and even though that last drive yielded points it was a long field goal so they probably weren't too upset about it. although here obviously they'd like to give up zero of course that's the goal each and every time out but when when they make that type of a field goal that long you almost give them a little nod of respect to the kicker like congratulations but you do feel pretty good about not giving up anything big yeah and we'll see if they can not give up anything big on this drive First and 10 here for Flacco. Looking left side, that's caught by Macklin. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Looking for Perriman, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Paul Puzlozny. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, 
They've all been excellent, and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And this game comfortably in hand. The scoreboard speaks for itself, but you still got your starting quarterback out there. When, when do you go to the backup, let him get some time? And that's one of the great questions in the NFL, Brandon, because I'm just going to tell you, in the 2015 season, I commentated on three games in a row that were blowouts. And in none of them did the starting quarterback ever come out of the game for the team that had a big lead. And in each instance, I asked the coaches later on, why didn't you do that? And they all looked at me and said, just don't really do that in the NFL. We, we, you know, these guys play, and we just play them all the way through. Now, in certain situations, they will take them out. But for the most part, they're not as worried and concerned about getting them out of the game. And that's always puzzled me a little bit. So, Brandon, when this offense gathers together to watch tape for this game, they're going to be feeling pretty good about themselves until the coaches get upset about the play we just saw. But you know their defense is going to be. But we put up big points all game long. The defense is going to win one every now and then. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. Yeah, let me puff out my chest a little bit, even though I'm not rooting for either team. That was a really nice defensive play. It's awfully fun to watch, even in an offensive game. The Jaguars on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is going to be third and 13. Here's a carry for a former starter. This is T.J. Yeldon, and he'll get this up only to about the 33. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Jaguars are winners here.